In this lesson, we're going to graph two functions. We're going to graph in red the function of y or f of x equals tangent theta. And so I'll write that y equals tangent theta. And in green, we're going to graph the function y or f of x equals cotangent theta. Here we have our coordinate grid laid out, and it's like we have a unit circle that rotates from the angle of zero all the way through complete revolution to 360 degrees, or in radians, from zero to two pi radians. And here on the independent quantity axis, we have it laid out from zero at the origin all the way to 2 pi for an entire revolution of the circle. And then for amplitude, we have values ranging from a minimum of negative 2 down here at the dependent variable axis all the way to 1 to 2 at the top. And so let's evaluate the ratios, or the ratio first, of tangent theta and first of all, we're going to evaluate this point here at 1, 0, and that would be the cosine over here on the unit circle. Cosine is 1, sine is 0. And what is tangent? Well, tangent theta is uh, sine over cosine. So sine theta over cosine theta which is the tangent identity. So we use this identity, and so for tangent of zero, we have our sine theta, which is zero over one. And what is zero divided by one? Well, it's zero, so we mark our first point at zero comma zero. And where else on the unit circle do we see, uh, where we're gonna see a tangent with a numerator of zero. Well, we're also going to see it an entire rotation at 2 pi, and also at pi, our sine is zero, so our tangent is likewise going to be zero. Next, let's look for other extremities. If we just go halfway on the circle to pi over 2, what do we see? Well, at pi over 2, we'll put tangent of pi over 2 is going to equal, it's going to again equal sine over cosine. Well, over here at pi over 2, our sine is 1, our cosine is 0. Well, what is 1 divided by 0? Well, is division by 0 defined in mathematics or in algebra? No, it's not. So it is undefined, so it's what we call, and we studied earlier in the year, we call this an infinite discontinuity or a vertical asymptote. And where else are we going to find on our unit circle a, whoops, I drew it in the wrong place, I meant to draw it at pi over 2. Okay, I'm going to erase that and replace it. Where else do we see on a unit circle a vertical discontinuity or vertical asymptote. Well, we also see it here at 3 pi over 2. And we're going to go back forward one here. Here we go. 3 pi over 2. And so we have two vertical discontinuities in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Next, let's evaluate at the next point on our unit circle, pi over 6. So we go to pi over 6 and tangent, I'll put over here, tangent of pi over 6 again equals sine over cosine, well on the unit circle, we see at pi over 6, we have a sine of 1 half, or 0.5, to decimalize it, 
divided by a cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is going to be about 0 0.866 to 0 0.867. And when we multiply uh, this out, or divide out, we get approximately uh, 0.5, a ratio of 0.57 or 0.58. And so here at pi over 6, we're going to go up here. These are 0.2 apiece. So we come up here just a shade below 0.6. And then we look elsewhere on our unit circle where we have the same numbers as a ratio. If we go over to 5 pi over 6, we're going to have in this instance 1 half divided by negative 3 pi over 2. And so at 5 pi over 6, we come down to negative 0.58 which is right here. We continue around the unit circle and we get to 7 pi over 6. We're going to have in this instance uh, negative 1 half divided by negative uh, square root of 3 over 2. And so that's going to a negative divided by negative is positive. So we bring it up here. And finally at 11 pi over 6 we're going to have negative 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. So that's going to be a negative number. So we come down to 11 pi over 6, negative 0.58. So that's what we're looking at right there. Next we're going to try the pi over 4. For the pi over 4, if we look right here, tangent pi over 4 equals the sine over cosine, so it's going to be square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. So any number divided by itself is 1, so this, the tangent of pi over 4 equals 1. So we go up here to pi over 4, and we go to 1 right here, and then we come over here to uh, 3 pi over 4, we're going to have square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, so it's going to be negative 1, so we go to 3 pi over 4, we go to negative 1. We go to our quadrant 3, we're going to have 5 pi over 4, and again we're going to have negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by negative square root of 2 over 2, so we come up here to a positive 1, and then finally we come down to quadrant Four, we're going to have 7 pi over 4, we're going to have negative square root of 2 over 2 divided by positive square root of 2 over 2. So that will be negative 1. So we bring this right here. All right. Finally, we're going to come over here to uh, pi over 3. So tangent of pi over 3, yeah, pi over 3, and we come back to pi over 3, and we have sine over cosine, so it's going to be square root of 3 over 2 divided by the cosine, which is 1 half. So square root of 3 over 2 divided by cosine, which is 1 half. Well, in dividing by a fraction is the same by mul as multiplying by a reciprocal. So instead we're going to take this one half in the denominator and it'll end up being square root of 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. So the one half down here becomes 2 over 1. What will we see here? 2 over 2 are going to cancel. So the tangent of square root of uh, pi over 3 is going to be simply re reduces to the square root of 3. So, square root of 3 is going to be approximately 1.73, thereabouts. So we come up to pi over 3, we go up to 1.7, this is 1.6, 1.8, so a little over halfway between. And then we, we go over to, in our unit circle, over to uh, 2 pi over 3, which is going to be square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. So we're going to have negative... 1.74 or so. So we go to negative, that's negative 1.8, 1. so it'll be about right here. And then in quadrant 3, and I'm going to have to erase the work we've done here, 
it's going to be a negative divided by negative, so we go up to positive 1.74. And finally, down here at 5 pi over 3, we're going to have a negative 1.74, so it will go right about here. And now we have all the, the 16 points in the unit circle drawn, so we're going to make a little sketch here. And I draw a little arrow to demonstrate continuity to the left of zero, and it's going to go up. Now, as it goes up, as the graph goes up, it's going to approach infinity as a value, all the way up to 90 degrees or pi over 2, and then all of a sudden it's going to go from going towards positive infinity to, to negative to approaching negative infinity. So then we're going to come up from the bottom instantly, and I'm going to draw an arrow down here to demonstrate continuity, at least it continues there, and we come up here through zero at pi, and go up, and as we approach three pi over two, we get closer and closer to infinity, but do not touch it. And as we get closer and closer, and eventually we go from quadrant three to quadrant four, go from quadrant 3 to quadrant 4, we're going to, again, go from towards infinite infinity, towards then to approaching positive, negative infinity, and we're going to come up here like this. And so in red, we have the, from the interval 0 to 2 pi drawn out. And so that will be in red. Now we're going to shift gears, and we're going to graph in green the cotangent function. Now the cotangent is simply going to be the reciprocal of the tangent. So this will go a lot more quickly because we have something to work with. Do you remember over here at, at zero, at theta equals zero, we had, we had um, zero over one, which was sine over cosine. Well, for cotangent, it's going to be cotangent of zero degrees well, that's going to be 0 divided by 1, or it's reciprocal. So we're just going to, uh, do we have, or it's going to be 1 over 0, rather. 1 over 0. For division by 0, is that defined? No, it's not. So we have an infinite discontinuity, or vertical asymptote, at theta equals 0. And likewise, if we go over to 2 pi, we have the same... Thing. We have an infinite discontinuity or vertical asymptote. So here we have this drawn out. And is there any place else that we have uh, we have an undefined for a cotangent? Okay, what about right here at, at zero, uh, at pi? We're going to have our cotangent to be negative one divided by zero. So that's going to qualify us for another infinite discontinuity or vertical asymptote. Now also, wherever we have our vertical asymptotes for tangent, we're going to have the reciprocal which will produce a value of zero for the cotangent because we're going to say the cotangent of pi over 2, well that's going to be that's going to equal 0 over 1 as opposed to, for, to uh, tangent 1 over 0. So we're going to see at pi over 2 a cotangent of 0, and likewise at 3 pi over 2, which is going to be 0 over negative 1. So we have these points already and vertical discontinuities lined out. Let's go to pi over 6. If you recall from pi over 6, we had sine over cosine which was one half divided by square root of three over two. Well, for pi over six, for cotangent of pi over six, we're going to have the inverse of that, or the reciprocal of that, which is going to be square root of three over two divided by one half, and everything cancels out to equal a square root of three. So we're going to come right up here at pi over six to be square root of three. And over here in quadrant two, we're at five pi over six, we're going to have a negative or excuse me, positive 1 uh, square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half, which is going to be negative 
Over here at 7 pi over 6, we're going to have a negative divided by a negative. So we come up here to square root of 3 over square root of 3. And then finally in quadrant 4, we're going to have uh, let's see, sine is going to be negative. So negative divided by positive will be negative square root of 3. So we'll come right here. And now for pi over 4, we have sine over cosine being square root of 3 over 2 divided by square root of 3 over 2. Well, the reciprocal of that is also going to be square root of 3 over square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. So that's also going to be 1. So every single place we see 1, over here in quadrant 1 we have 1. We have negative 1 in quadrant 2. Over here at 5 pi over 4 we have positive 1. This is negative divided by negative. And over here in quadrant 4, we at 7 pi over 4, we have a, again, our, sine, our, our cosine is positive, but our sine is negative, so it ends up being the same thing. And finally, at pi over 3, we're going to have a cotangent is going to be the cosine over sine, so that's going to be 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. So we come right here, and likewise, at three, 2 pi over 3, we're going to have uh, negative um, one half divided by square root of three over two, and then a negative divided by a negative in quadrant three. We're going to have our cotangent here, and finally in quadrant four, we're going to have the reciprocal of of square root of three over two divided by negative one half, which is going to come right up here to uh, negative. 0.58 approximately. So now we can draw in our, our uh, cotangent curve. And we come here like this. And here we have a approaching in, from infinity on the left and then towards negative infinity on the right. And finally here from quadrant 3 we start here at negative at positive infinity go down approaching negative infinity. So what we have here is quite a nice distinctive pattern of, of tangent red, cotangent and green. We can see how they're reciprocal. This is a really beautiful repeating pattern. I hope that you're, you become familiar with this and that you learn something from this today. Thank you for viewing.